Now let's take a look at headers and footers. All right, let's find a nice blank footer to work with. Now when you're working with headers and footers, what I want to do is publish a document that uses that word template. All right, so we're going to be modifying acme.dot again. This document was published using acme.dot. So we want to publish that book that references that word template and then make our headers and footer changes inside of it. All right, and the reason for that again is because the media object has set up our page layout for us. So we know exactly what the paper size, page orientation, and margins are going to be. That information is not inside of your word template. All right, so if you were to create headers and footers directly inside of your word template, you may get the spacing wrong on them. All right, so I'm going to double click in the footer here and go ahead and design a footer. Now let's say in this footer I would like to include the page number that this page is on. And let's say I also want to include the title of my document. Now the way to do that is using field codes inside of Authorit. And again, here's where some of that word expertise may need to come into play. Now in Word 2007, your field codes are located underneath the design ribbon when you double click inside of a footer. And they are hiding underneath an option called Quick Parts. All right, see here we have this field option. Here's your list of possible field codes for your Word document. I'm just going to scroll through here until I find the page option. So I'm going to select page and then the format for the page. Go ahead and click OK. All right. Now let's say I also want to include the title of my document. And let's say I want it to be right aligned on the page. So I'm just going to tab over. And my tab stop is set up according to my margins, which is what I want. And let's go ahead and enter in another field code that inserts the title of my document. Title is a doc property or document property. So let's go here to doc properties. Here's all of my options. All of these field codes will add in helpful information about your document, but this is the one that I'm looking for. This is the title of my document. Now the title of my document came over from my book object in the title field. Okay, so if I want that same book object title to display in my footer, then I'll go ahead and select that property here. All right, doc property title and click OK. All right, so I've designed my footer here. I want the page number and the title to display. So how do I now save this to the Word template? To save it to the Word template, we will now save it as an auto text entry. To do that, I'll hit select all, and that will select all of the contents of my footer. Now from here, I want to go up to Quick Parts, Save Selection to Quick Part Gallery. All right, and what I'm doing here is saving this as an auto text entry. Let's give it a name, Training Footer. Now this name is what you will then enter in your media objects, okay? So this is how your Word template will be speaking to your media objects because this is the name that we are going to tell our media objects in a few moments. So we'll give it a name. We'll save it as an auto text entry. And we will save it inside of our Word template. All right, if you save it in one of Word's default templates, you're never going to see that footer again when you publish. You want to make sure that you select your author at Word template here. All right, go ahead and click OK, and we're good. So again, that procedure was Quick Parts, Save Selection to Quick Part Gallery, Enter the Name, Select Auto Text Entries, and select your Word template. All right, 
I did mention this was very, very procedural. It is documented in your training manual. All right. I'll go ahead and click Save here. And again, I want to see this message. Do you also want to save changes to the document template? Well, yes, I do. All right. So this is my training footer. So now what I'll need to do, let's go to Author It. All right. And take a look at my sections here. So my sections are coming from my title page, table of contents, index, and then my section starting topic templates, all right? And in that case, it's going to be my module template. So which media object is my module template using? It is using the module section media object. All right, so let's go to that media object now. Standards media. And in the print area, Notice how I have these headers and footer subtabs. All right, what I want to do is add in my new training footer to these lists of possible footers that I could publish with. To do that, I'll click Modify. Put in the name here, Training Footer. So Training Footer is my auto text name. What type of auto text entry is it? It's a footer. Now I'll click Add and click OK. Because I designated it as a footer, I'm going to see it in my footer list here. I would not see it in my header list. Okay, I designated it as a footer. So that designation is very important for you. So here you'll decide, well, which pages do I want my footer to display on? All right, so I have different first page enabled here. If I wanted to display on that first page, I'd select Training Footer. And then if I want it to display on the remaining pages within that section, I would select it in my odd list as well. All right, so by selecting it in both lists, then the same footer will display for every page within my module section. All right, now let's go ahead and test our work. You never want to get too far ahead of yourself without testing your work. So what this is doing now is adding that training footer to each one of the module sections inside of my document. Let's go to View Output. All right, and let's go down to Module A. All right, so here's my footer displaying here. Module B displaying there as well. All right, now, I'm not going to see it in the index because I didn't associate it with the index media object. All right, now let's go ahead and add in a header so you can see that procedure again. Let's say I'm not very thrilled with my Acme banner that displays here. I'm going to create a new header to use instead. So I'm just going to click in that header area from my published document. Hit delete to delete that graphic. But let me go ahead and just insert a different graphic here. I'm going to go up to picture and let's go to my graphics directory that I have on my computer. And let's select the backpacks icon. Now when it inserts that picture, it's going to be rather big. I'm going to resize it. All right, I'll resize it however I'd like it to display in this header. And the auto text entry is going to remember that size for me. All right, now let's put in a catchy little phrase here. Let's just add some plain text instead of a field code. Future of time travel. Alright, so here's what I'd like to display in my header instead. So instead of using field codes this time, I've put in a graphic, which I've resized, and I've put in some plain text. Alright, I can put in whatever I want into this auto text entry. I could put in a table 
if I'd like to, plain text, graphics, field codes, you know, if you can think of it, you can put it in your auto text entry. Now to repeat the process we went through before, I'll now save by doing a control A to select all. And let's go up to our design ribbon. And same process, quick parts. Save selection to quick part. Let's give it a name, training header. Save it as an auto text entry. Save it in the Word template and click OK. So again, we're going to give it a name. This is the name that the media object will use. It is an auto text entry and we're saving it in Acme dot dot. Click OK. Hit Save. Yes, I want to save changes to the template. I always love to get this message here because that means I have modified the template. Say yes. Now the last step is we go to our media object. Let's go to Media, Module section. This time I want to add a header, so I'll go to the Header tab. Click Modify Headers. All right, and type in the name of the auto text entry. Training header. The type is a header. I'll click Add to add it to my list, and then I hit OK. All right, now last step is to tell AuthorIt what pages I would like that header to display on. I'm going to go ahead and select it for all of my pages. All right, and hit OK. Now let's go ahead and do a test publication. Make sure we're happy with our headers and footers. Now what will happen is that header will be added to every page within my module section. So let's go ahead and take a look there. All right, so there's my header now. Notice how it kept the sizing on the graphic. It entered in the plain text. Down here, it's using field codes. Title field code here. And I'm just right-clicking and toggling field codes. Right-click toggle field codes, and here we're using the page field code. Okay, so your auto text entries can contain plain text, graphics, tables, field codes, basically any information that you would like to display. You can include uh, some drawing tools in there, some borders if you'd like to, completely up to you and how you would like to design that auto text entry. Now remember that the connection between the Word template's auto text entry to author it is through the media object that publishes that section. Okay, so always remember once you create that auto text entry, go to the media object that builds that section and add it to either the header or the footer tab depending on what you want your results to be. Okay, now we'll point out that now that I've added the training header and training footer to one media object, it's actually now available from all media objects. So I only have to add it one time, and I can technically now select it from any media object in my library. So I just need to add it the once, and then I can reuse it in any media object that I would like to.